What's going on, guys? We're live. I think this thing's working. Welcome to the channel tonight, guys. Give everybody a second to hop in here, but uh, thank you guys for joining. But we're going to cover today some general questions. Uh, anything that you guys want me to answer, I'm happy to answer them for you guys. I uh, also want to share with you my car search update, kind of give you guys an idea of where I'm at in that process. I have some funny stories along the way in searching for cars. Uh, and then I also want to give you guys some dealership experiences that I've had. I've been calling a few dealerships and I've had some, some fun ones. So uh, thank you guys for joining in. Hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, you know, feel free and leave a chat. I'm happy to answer any question that you guys might have. I'll stick around as long as you guys want to. It has been too long since I've done a live. So welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for jumping in, and uh, yeah, send some questions my way, and I'll be giving you guys some updates along the way, but hopefully you guys are having a good uh, Tuesday evening. Hopefully you guys are uh, doing something fun, and, and you guys are having fun over the summer, at least I guess summer's kind of started, so yeah. Uh, anyways, guys, send your questions my way. I'll answer any questions you guys want me to ask. Um, you know, I have some interesting updates around the industry, kind of where things are going with, uh, you know, ordering cars, taking delivery of cars what I'm kind of seeing out in the marketplace. Uh, so happy to share any of that with you guys. Happy to take this any direction you guys want to go. But just wanted to say thank you guys. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, I am going to be sharing with you uh, a few people that have bought uh, some of the Gone in 60 merchandise. So if you guys haven't checked out that store, you can go find one of my latest videos. Uh, the link to Teespring is in there. But uh, really appreciate a few of you who have bought kind of the Gone in 60 merchandise, uh, and I'll be making sure and highlighting those folks in the upcoming videos. You guys have been awesome. You've taken pictures uh, and just kind of shared your pictures with me, which honestly it means a lot. I'm super grateful to you guys, and just uh, I think it's cool that someone wants to wear the Gone in 60 apparel. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's in some of my uh, latest links uh, that I have going on. Uh, I do want to share with you guys, I do have some updates on those. That Share you guys here shortly. I've made a list and I'm working on filming those right now. So uh, the upcoming videos that I have are the following: uh, three sync features uh, you didn't know about. If you guys haven't seen my video on three things you didn't know about UConnect, honestly, it's probably one of my more popular videos. I think I have about forty thousand views on that one, which is great. So we're going to do it for the Sync Three system. We're going to do it for Ford. Uh, so three things that uh, maybe you didn't know about. Uh, we're going to do a Sync 3 versus Uconnect comparison. Um, after using both systems, I want to share with you guys kind of the benefits of each system, maybe some of the negatives and drawbacks. But as you guys have watched some of my latest videos, I've done a lot of comparisons between Dodge, uh, between Ford, and the two different videos. Uh, I want to talk about how a Bullet Mustang is different than a regular Mustang. I don't think a lot of people, you know, know. Like when people see the Bullet Mustang places, like they don't really know like what to think or they know it's a mustang but they don't really understand the bullet so i want to just cover why the bullet mustang was made how it's different than a regular mustang so i think that'll be a fun one um i want to do some exhaust mode drive offs i did do some exhaust mode kind of comparisons between my challenger and my mustang but we're going to be doing some exhaust mode drive offs so you guys can see the different uh sounds that each mode makes obviously my car has uh, dual active exhaust so we're going to be testing that out uh, we're going to do everything you didn't, you know, everything you need to know about the digital gauge cluster. It's one of my favorite features on my Mustang, uh, which I think is really cool. And there's so many cool, unique features within uh, the digital gauge cluster that I'll be sharing with you guys. Uh, one that I'm planning on that I want to do very soon is uh, my neighbor has a Tesla, and I am going to let him drive a manual Mustang. So Tesla owner drives manual Mustang. I'm excited for that one. I think that one should be a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, have some fun, unique ideas that'll make that fun. Um, and then I also want to do a manual comparison, which manual, you know, transmission is better, you know, the Challenger, the Mustang. And I also want to do, um, I also just want to do kind of manual versus automatic with the Mustang and what you should buy. So if you guys are out in the marketplace. So anyways, uh, three, four, five, six, seven upcoming videos. I'll try and at least get one of those out. Uh, every week, but it's been so long guys since I've done a live. So I wanted to hop on uh, Feel free and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. It really helps out in the algorithm If you guys have any questions uh, go ahead and feel free and leave those in the chat I would love to 
I'd love to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, just really appreciate your guys' support uh, on the channel. Uh, appreciate those of you who have bought some merchandise. Appreciate all the comments, all the likes. Uh, I also appreciate the thumbs down. Those help the videos out too. So, you know, getting into YouTube's algorithm and, and being able to do more of those. But uh, anyways, guys, yeah, any any questions from you guys, um, feel free and pop them in the chat. Um, I'd love to answer them before I jump into some of the topics that I wanted to cover tonight. And yep. In my true live fashion, I'm rocking a big gulp. So, <laughs> things. Look at this thing. It's bigger than my head. About the same size as my head. 64 ounces of pure bliss, baby. Bring on the kidney stones. But yeah, guys, drop a chat. Sorry, I, I should have advertised this a little bit more ahead of time, just so you guys knew I was doing this. But uh, yeah, I've had some of you hit me up on what I'm doing the next live. So I uh, wanted to make sure that. Uh, I hopped on here and let you guys know that uh, I'm still doing these. So uh, anyways, guys, drop me a drop me a chat. Let me know you're here. Give this video a thumbs up. Uh, really appreciate your guys' support on the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll give you guys some time to leave some comments, and then I'll jump into what I wanted to chat about tonight. No comments so far, guys. Come on, we gotta we gotta kick this off. We gotta get this rolling. <laughs> I know some of you are watching. I can see the numbers. So, throw me a chat. Say what's up. Tell me, tell me what your next car is. Tell me, you know, tell me how you're liking the videos. Are there any videos you guys would like me to shoot? Um, anything uh, in particular? Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I'm gonna try and focus on for my videos. I'm really trying to focus on upcoming videos or in the upcoming months is my production quality of the videos. Uh, you know, I see a lot of YouTubers out there and I think their quality, I think some of them have really good quality. I think some of them, you know, aren't that good. And so I'm going to be purchasing some extra cameras, a drone. Um, I'm just excited to bring you guys better footage and better content. Um, I'm constantly studying what other people are doing and also coming up with some of my own ideas. So hopefully one of the things you guys will notice with the upcoming videos is we're just going to get better with the content, um, the footage, the lighting, the angles. Uh, I want to get some better angles of you guys seeing me drive a manual transmission. I think that would be really cool. Um, and so, yeah, excited for, for the upcoming videos. But if you guys are on tonight, drop a comment below. Let me know you're here. Give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Really appreciate you guys and the support um, on the channel. Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> I'm just messing, guys. Uh, well, yeah, let's jump into it, guys. I don't want to have you guys sitting around. Um, let me share with you guys some updates. So, guys, the car market right now is insane. It is crazy. Uh, that's the only way I know how to describe it. Um, I'll share with you some stories that I've heard from some different manufacturers and some different dealers. Uh, we can talk about the chip shortage. We can talk about inventory cars. Some of the experiences I've had, I've come close to buying some cars, but then I haven't been able to. So where do we start? Uh, chip shortage. What I know on the chip shortage is uh, a few things. Um, it, you know, with the chip shortage, it is not, affect it is not affecting every single model out there. Uh, what I'm learning is the more popular models are getting the chips and they're dedicating it to those because they can sell them. The Chargers Challengers from Dodge, uh, you know, they're still taking orders for 2021 um, Dodge Chargers, wide body scat packs. I know that because I've talked to my local dealer. Um, they haven't said when that's gonna end, but they still have allocations to order a 2021. Uh, a Chevy Camaro right now, man, Chevy, their plant shut down. Uh, it's supposed to open in the next week or two. Uh, I. I haven't had a Chevy dealership yet. Tell me I can build a 2021 Camaro. If you guys have had that uh, or heard something different, let me know. Uh, but what I've heard from Chevy is the Corvette is on a several year back order. Um, the Corvette plant is shut down too. Um, I've heard with Chevy, the Equinox and some of the other models are getting the chips. So guys, with these chips, um, it's not just affecting the car industry. It's affecting electronics. It's affecting so many other things. So they're having to you know, kind of decide how to do this. And with COVID, 
it created like a perfect storm. Obviously the building in China uh, burning to the ground didn't help, but depending on the manufacturers, you know, last year with COVID, they kind of cut back on their demand for chips and different things. And it's just, it just caused an overall shortage. Some of the manufacturers done a better job of stockpiling chips, but guys, cars are being made. But what I'm seeing out in the marketplace is obviously used car prices are at an all time premium. Uh, I paid $44,300 for my bullet Mustang in February. The MSRP on that car was almost $54,000. Uh, I have now had four offers for my bullet Mustang and keep in mind, these are all from dealerships. So this is trade in value. So I've owned the car now for, let's see, we're in June, I've owned the car now for about four months and I got an offer for 46,000 trade in that's from a Dodge dealership. Um, I have received an offer for 46,400 from Vroom, which I think is good is one of the best ones uh a chevy dealership uh up in montana just offered me uh 43.5 for my car which was low and i wouldn't take um and then i have another chevy dealership that's offered me 47,000 uh, for my car and so guys if you have a used car right now uh it is a good time to sell it however if you're trying to replace your car good luck because right now if you're trying to build a car you might be able to build a dodge uh mustangs you know i haven't obviously because i have a mustang i'm probably selling my mustang i haven't looked into what it's like for ford i believe if you are trying to get a dodge you still can you can still order it chevys uh what i'm seeing with the camaros is a lot of them are in transit to dealerships and they are getting like it's so funny uh the different dealerships that i call there's a couple things that I'm finding as a common theme. Uh, number one, the dealerships, a lot of times, you can't even tell you the specs on the cars that are coming in because they don't even know what they are. And so sometimes they have to go and find me a build sheet. They have to go find different things and send it to me. Uh, and second, these cars, before they even get to a dealership, before you can even see them, people are putting deposits on them and buying them. So depending on the car that you're getting, uh, man, I think what I'm seeing, I'm still seeing Ford Mustangs out there, uh, just because honestly, they're the, they're the top selling, uh, muscle car, although Dodge has rivaled them and, and overtaken them the last few months. Uh, but what I am seeing is just crazy prices. Um, what I'm seeing from Chevy is they're charging MSRP for the cars. I've only seen a few instances where they're overcharging. Uh, Racer X just dropped a video today where he talked about how Chevy is going to, in particular in regards to the Corvette and some of the other models, they are only giving dealerships so many allocations. And if those dealerships are having cars sit on their lots and they're charging more, they're not going to get as many allocations. So it's good to see that Chevy stepping in and doing that. Um, as I've searched for Mustangs here locally, I've done a, just a very light search. It seems like you can find Mustangs. Uh, Camaros, depending on where you're at, all, almost all of them right now are in transit. And I've talked to some few different people about what transit means and transit can mean a number of things. Um, what I think a lot of these manufacturers did is they built these cars and they put them in empty lots. And that scares me because the cars are exposed to the elements. You know, you don't know if they get a door ding when they're parked out there, you know, vandalism, whatever else. Like one thing I've learned about buying new cars is they're not new when you get them. Like, you know, they, they wash them, just different things just aren't right with them. And so in transit means so many different things. And one of the things that's been very apparent to me with the shortage, especially with Chevy is they have no idea when their cars are arriving. Like, um, I saw one that had a build sheet, uh, the, the build was accepted and started on February 25th and they still don't have the car. So in transit means, we know and think there's a car coming. We have no idea when we're getting there. And for example, I called a dealership in Oregon and they're like in transit. He says, you know, you watch like the movie fast and the furious. Like we have no idea if like, there's no tracking. Like we have no idea if those cars are getting hijacked. Um, some dealerships have said some of their cars have been held um, by local DMVs or I can't remember what he said, but he said they were being held by someone. And so in transit guys, it is just a wild, wild west. There is not enough inventory out there. Uh, you know, what I've heard from Chevy is they are starting up the Camaros back in the fall, September, I think end of September. Uh, you know, one things that I've heard with Dodge is 
Dodge really, they're not going to change hardly anything with their lineup. I think they might update the Uconnect system that allows Apple wireless CarPlay. That is what my Dodge dealership here local has told me. Uh, the 2022s, I just, I don't think a lot of manufacturers right now, I, I think they're just going to kind of stick with the same formula. That goes for Chevy, that goes for Dodge. Although, you know, Ford released the Mach 1 last year. They might have a new update coming soon, but I still don't know much about that. So in transit, guys, it has been the wild, wild west. Like it's just a lot of these dealerships, they know they have a car coming, but they have no idea what the car is. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. These cars aren't even being posted on a lot of dealerships' websites. Um, it's, it's just insane. So what I typically do is I go build a car, uh, you know, how I would want to build it. And then I click view inventory. And then I kind of find the dealerships that have them, but almost all the cars are in transit. Uh, Dodge, um, it does seem like Dodge, they've quoted me eight weeks. I think that's been pushed. I think it's a little bit longer than that um, of when they are getting their models in. But um, yeah, guys, it's the wild, wild west. So if you're trying to sell your car, if you have a couple cars and you want to sell one of them, go for it. Like if I would have hung on to my Dodge Challenger, so I bought that car for 33000 and I sold it for 37000 um back in february when would have it yeah february end of february and i guarantee if i would have held on to that car i probably could have sold that car right now for like 42 43 44 so six seven thousand dollars more so what's crazy you know owning my mustang for four months you know i owe about 40 grand on it i'd make seven grand from that that dealership so um if i do sell the mustang i'm probably not going to sell it privately and here's why uh, when I bought my bullet Mustang, um, because I didn't trade in my car because I wasn't getting good values for it, uh, I had to pay sales tax and that was about $3,500 in sales tax on the car. So, uh, what I'm finding with dealerships is they're offering a lot more or very close to what private party is where private party used to be over here. Dealerships used to be here. You know, dealerships, what they're going to do is they're going to buy your car and they're going to mark it up about two grand, maybe three grand and hope they make about two grand off of the car. Uh, so what I'm seeing with dealerships is they're getting a lot more close with private party sellers and uh, they are, you know, and, and when you can trade it in, it saves you on sales tax. So even if they're maybe a thousand or two thousand dollars less than I would get from a private party, because the cost of the car I'm buying is similar to what I'm my car is trading in. I'll pay like $300 in sales tax or $200 or maybe even a wash just depending on the kind of model car uh, that I'm getting. Some of the interesting things that I've seen, uh, Dodge uh, in particular, is I've been looking to build a Dodge Charger wide body scat pack. The price of those cars goes up every single day. Dodge's incentives went from, on a Dodge Charger wide body scat pack, went from $2,000 down to $1,500. So I'm seeing a lot of changes out in the marketplace and prices are crazy. I I just don't think the market, I think it's very similar to the housing market. Uh, there's just not enough inventory. People are willing to pay crazy prices for it. And, you know, I'm kind of on the fence, you know, it's like, I don't want to be upside down when I get into a car, but I can tell you uh, a Dodge Charger wide body scat pack. I built one out um, and the MSRP was right around 53,000, just under 53. Uh, so the Dodge Charger wide body scat pack, the color I like is the granite. Um, I do the red brake calipers, uh, the Alcantara seats. I was trying to decide between the red or the black, still kind of on the fence there. Um, and I think that is it. I didn't do the driver convenience group. Um, and my build came out to be just under 53,000 and I got them to come down to, gosh, it was, I got them to come down about a grand or $1,500, um, which, you know, is basically what the incentive, and now I, I, sorry, I take that back. So Dodge, even with their incentive, after everything, it was about 53,000. I got the dealership to come down maybe another thousand bucks, 1500 bucks. Uh, with Chevy, uh, all I have been able to see is MSRP. That's it. Some dealerships have charged more, but Chevy's done a better job about not overcharging. I haven't seen too many Dodges get too crazy. Um, but it just depends on the part of the country that you're in. Um, obviously I, I do think this is going to settle out at some point. It'll be interesting. I think these dealerships are sitting on a lot of inventory. They just are waiting for the chips to go into the cars. Um, and it scares me, you know, like if you're building a new car, you don't know when it's done. You don't know if it's sitting out on a lot. You don't know if it's in transit. You don't, 
there's just a lot of, it, it's just, an, it's probably not a good time that I'm looking into selling my car, but uh, you know, where the market's where it's at, um, you know, I can make some money on it. I, I save in sales tax and you know, my payment stays very similar. So uh, that's kind of the update on the car search. I am really close on a few different options. Uh, I'm close on building a wide body scat pack and I'm really close on a Camaro. Uh, if I did a Camaro, it would be the two SS. Um, you know, the one LE, I just, I don't track a car. Uh, I like some of the features the two SS has. Uh, I do think the 1LEs look awesome, but they ride a little bit stiffer, and I really don't want something that rides stiffer. So I'm looking at a 2SS and a Camaro. Uh, with Dodge, I'm looking at a wide body charger uh, scat pack, and I'm also toying around with the idea of the Hellcat, but it'd be a manual Hellcat, and it would be basic. Like, I think all I did on that was granite. I did uh, red brake calipers and red seat belts. That's it. So cloth seats keeping it cheap, keeping the payments low. But I think we have a two to three year window. I just think these manufacturers, what they're working on right now is they're working on a way to electrify their vehicles, move away from combustion. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of seeing on the marketplace. A few funny stories, and then I'll take any questions or comments that you guys have. Uh, so it's funny. Uh, I love looking for new cars and I also hate it. If you guys have some experiences, please leave a comment on here. So a few funny experiences, uh, may, and maybe they're not that funny, but so I was really close to a car this weekend on a car this weekend. And for reference guys, I'm looking out of the state of Utah cause there is nothing here in the state of Utah. Uh, some dealerships have some cars coming in, but they're convertibles and it's just the colors. Like I've seen some black ones available, but I, I'm not going to go black. I just, I can't do black anymore. Uh, so it was funny. I was dealing with one over this weekend. Uh, it's actually been this past week. Uh, <laughs> man, I don't even know where to start with this one or how to unwind it. But so I was talking with the dealership and guy was kind of going back and forth. And I says, Hey, can you send me the spec sheet? Because it's, it doesn't list everything on your guys's website. Uh, they took the car off the website because they figured I'd buy it, which I was really close to doing. So I didn't know what the window sticker was. So then they send me a window sticker and a build sheet and it's totally the wrong car. Then they send me the right car. And then what I hate that dealerships do is if you're trading in a car, they ask you, what is the payoff on the car? And guys, I'm sorry. This is Austin's opinion. That is a trap. Do not ever tell them how much you owe on the car unless you're upside down in the car and you tell them, I need you to pay off my loan. Otherwise, I'm not doing this deal. However, if you have positive equity in a car, what they will do, if they know your payoff, let's say is $40,000. They will come right in around $40,000 and just pay off your car when your car might be worth 44, 45. So I was dealing with this dealership and I didn't even haggle with them on the price of the car. I was paying sticker for the car and I was willing to trade in um, my Mustang and I knew what other offers I had for the car. So they were trying to appraise and give me a value on the car and I get the age old question, well, how much do you owe on it? And I said, you know, I put a big chunk down when I bought the car. I just want you to give me the best price for my trading. So literally two hours later, I get a text from their sales manager and saying, I understand you want to negotiate the price of our new car. I want to let you know right now in this marketplace, we are not negotiating the price of new cars. I understand you're out of state. We're happy to sell it to you, but we're going to move this car just fine, whether you buy it or not. And I was like, hold on. Uh, I was just basically telling you, give me the best price for my trade-in car that you can. I said, I've never once negotiated on the price for your car. I've only offered sticker. And I said, honestly, like you can't call me to clarify that. And that dealership, um, I shut it down. Another one I was really close to on over the weekend, I was told the car is available. Uh, they don't know when it's going to get here. It might be on the 15th. It might be on the 20th this month. And I said, great. Well, you know, they offered me 47,000 for my car. That's seven grand in equity. I walk away from and I said, hey, this is great. Like, I will drive out there. I'll pick it up. I'm paying sticker price, whatever. And I says, let me know what I need to do to hold the car because these cars go so fast. So don't hear from him. Says, I'll get back to you first thing Monday. And, you know, <laughs> comes, comes back, doesn't say anything on Monday. And so I follow up on Tuesday. Well, I follow up Monday, end of day. I say, hey, any updates? Don't get any updates. Follow up the next day, no updates. And honestly, when you get that silence, you kind of feel like something bad's going to happen or they're you know, trying to pull one over on you. And uh, so what ended up happening 
is I finally got all of them today and it said, Hey, I was getting the runaround by my sales manager. And here's what happened. The original owner who put in the build sheet for this car that's in transit that we don't even have in our possession yet. Uh, we are giving that person a chance to come in and pick up the car. They gave up on the car because they never thought it would be built. Like, I mean, they ordered it back in February and here we are right now. So they're like, we can't show you the car. We can't guarantee you the car. Although we told you on Saturday, it's available. Like guys, there's just these games that these dealerships are playing, especially with out-of-state buyers. Like, you know, I have great credit score. I bought a lot of cars. Um, I'm ready to roll when I'm ready to roll. And so anyways, I got the runaround on that. So they're like, well, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of on the fence where he wants to buy it or not. And I'm like, well, what's the problem? Like, do you guys want to sell a car? Like he built the car. He put a deposit down. So anyways, they're giving him a chance to come in and get the car. Uh, that one I was very optimistic on. It had a lot of things that I liked with it, but I have to wait for a couple of days. Uh, another dealership that I've dealt with up in Montana, uh, guy is super nice guy, but he's older and it's taken him four days to send me a build sheet because he didn't even know what specs the car had on it. He just knew the color of the car and that's it. And so it's taken him four days to give me a build sheet and he wants to talk to me about my bullet Mustang and thinks it's so awesome and says, well, you know, I want to see one in person and I, you know, it's just, just chatting your ear off and then they they lowballed me in my trade-in at 43,000 and I'm like you realize like here are all the offers I've have I haven't writing like here you go so there's just these games you know the dealerships play and uh, find a dealership that when you're talking with them on the phone that they seem like good honest people they're going to take care of you if there's a problem you know like what I tell them is like look it, what if the car has a dent on it or scratch on it? Like, can you inspect it for me first? So anyways, guys, it is a wild, wild west out there. Uh, that is my updates on cars. That is my update on kind of where things are at. But guys, thank you for joining in. Do you have any questions? If you do, please leave a chat. Um, let me make sure I haven't missed any. Um, I don't think I've missed any chats tonight. Is chat even on? Am I missing? Let me make sure I have all my, oh, whoa, we've had a lot. Um, sorry, it was like hidden over here. We got a lot of awesome people on Luke, MTech, what's going on? Amanda, I am doing great. Good to see you, Amanda. Thank you for all your comments. Luke, I have, man, I have decided, uh, well, I'm close, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully we'll have an update here soon. Uh, let's see. Luke's here. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, guys. I've missed all of these. All my, my page was off. Uh, Swayze, what's up, brother? I loved your live last night. Um, guys, if you haven't checked out Swayze's channel, uh, does a great job, uh, great content, good person. He's here in Utah with me. Uh, someday soon, maybe at a car meet or something, we'll meet up. Um, but he's he's one person that I remember watching his channel when I was getting started, and he had his gray destroyer scat pack. Um, and I remember just watching, you know, I think he bought it up in Idaho, if I remember right. Swayze, if I'm wrong, correct me. But Swayze, I'm grateful for you, man, because I wouldn't have got here without you. Um, Luke, you're correct. I don't think he's seeing the chat. I wasn't Iowa Mopar nerd. What's up, brother? Dude, you're always so awesome to comment. Um, Mustangs are tough to get too. Well, Luke, there you go. You know, um, I've been looking at Mustangs. So yeah, it is not a great time to buy. Um, and it is going to be like this for a while. I agree. Um, Luke says, hold on to my bullet. What do you guys think I should do? Should I hang on my bullet? Should I sell it? I'm getting some good trade in prices. PBR Doug. Hey, what's up PBR? Good to hear from you, my friend. Um, let's see. Iowa Mopar. What's up? Time to sell, but not to buy. Very true statement. Yep. I couldn't agree more. 909 scat. I made it. Hey, what's up brother? Hello. Welcome. Welcome my friend. <laughs> Luke, he's not seeing the chat. Correct. We've had some technical difficulties, but now I'm now I'm seeing the chat. Hopefully, you guys are all still here. Uh, let's see. Nine oh nine scat. There's a white scat pack someplace in SoCal. There is. It's gone in sixties. Challenger. I think that's where it was supposed to go. So I sold. I traded in my Challenger to Larry H. Miller, uh, their fleet department. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, I'm glad I'm seeing you guys too. Sorry, I was like. I'm just going to keep going because I'm not seeing any comments on here. So I'm a newbie, guys. This is like my fourth chat. We'll, we'll get this mastered. Uh, but my Mac, for some reason, it was uh, minimize the screen. But I've been seeing the comments. Thank you, guys. It's good to know you guys are watching. Uh, so yeah, I sold my scat pack. I traded it in to Larry H. Miller. It was the fleet department here in Utah. 
Uh, they actually have dealerships in Arizona, I think California and a few others, but apparently my car is going to California. So you might see a white uh, knuckle Dodge Challenger 2019 scat pack rolling around. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I am Mopar nerd. Hold on to the bullet, brother. Yeah. You know, guys, I, I want to, I, here's the thing. Like I love my bullet. I love the looks of it. I think it's awesome. Uh, the challenges I have with my bullet is guys, I love detailing cars. I probably am at some point getting to going to start a, you know, I'm probably going to start a second channel, but it'll be about detailing cars. So my first job, uh, when I was 14, uh, I don't know how I worked that out, but I was 14 and I worked at a car wash. So I worked at a car wash all through high school. I worked at a car wash uh, right up until I went to college. So I love washing and detailing cars. The problem I have with my Mustang is um, it just the quality, like just having black paint is hard for me. You know, um, some of the rock chips I got driving back from Iowa is tough. Um, the thing that I struggle with is just driving down the road. It just creaks and cracks all the time and it, it kind of bugs me and then like uh, I'm going to be doing a video. Racer X actually gave me some advice before I bought the Bullet Mustang, and I didn't listen to him. Uh, you know, he said, "Don't buy a manual from Ford." Um, he he basically said, "Get the 10-speed auto," but in the Bullet, you can't get that. But I love the sound of that car. Um, it looks awesome. It looks menacing. Uh, but I don't know, uh, Luke. You have a black 2020 Mustang GT. Uh, performance pack. Uh, is that a one or is that a two, Luke? Uh, and also you have the 10 speed. See, 10 speed's the way to go. Um, there's a reason in the Mach 1 that they rolled out the Tremec. You can get the Tremec and the Shelby 350. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's that. If Ford puts in their next Mustang, I would bet, I, I would bet anybody on here, whatever you want to bet. But I guarantee Ford does not put the MT82 transmission in another one of their vehicles. I don't think so. I think they're moving to Tremec and it is the smart way to go. So I don't know, guys. I, you know, I might buy and sell cars every five or six months. I don't know. I want to keep it fresh. Um, I'm loving this because honestly, I have really, when you add up my car payments and everything, I've paid for one oil change in the last year. Um, I've made money on each car that I've sold. And I just want to keep changing it up. I keep wanting to buy new cars. Um, I keep wanting to explore. But my goal for the channel, big V8. Uh, and then I really want to bring like a like a JDM type car. Uh, my dream scenario right now would be to have a big V8 muscle on the channel, which will always be on here. And then have like a Toyota Supra or a Nissan 400Z. I think it'd be cool. But when the Supra comes out in a manual, I'm game. Uh, some of the cars I'm looking at guys, obviously if I do a Dodge charger, wide body scat pack, yeah, Luke, I've done one oil change. So my challenger had how many miles did that thing have it when I sold it? 9,000, 8,000. I only did one oil change. My Mustang right now is at 4,000. It's due here at 5,000 for an oil change. So yeah, I've, I've been working from home. So I've driven about 13,000 miles in the last year and a half. And I might, if I sell my bullet, all I've gotten by was one bullet with one oil change. If I don't, then I'll have to have two. Uh, Luke, black paint is tough. Uh, you know, I do a two, bush, two bucket wash method. Uh, I, you know, power wash the car. I do a snow foam. Then I do just some, you know, I let that sit on there. Then I use my soap. Then I use a mitt. And then I, I leaf blow the car. So it's got... Uh, a five-year ceramic coating on it, but I breathe on that car and it shows scratches and I just, the perfectionist in me, I have a hard time with the black paint. But, uh, you know, guys, it, what's interesting is if I go wide body charger scat pack, uh, some of the Camaros I've been looking at um, and some other cars that I haven't even mentioned to you guys I'm looking at, I might go automatic. I don't know. I might really regret that. What do you guys think? I've been manual in my last two cars. Uh, I've actually, apart from the grinding of the gears and the bullet Mustang, What's cool about the Mustang is how high the car revs out. It's actually really fun and easy to drive um, from a manual. I actually think it's easier than my Challenger to drive. Uh, and the reason for that is I don't have to shift gears as much because the, the rev range goes so much higher. Uh, you know, you're going up to 7,500 RPMs where you're like 6,000 in the Challenger. So anywho, that's, that's kind of where we're at. But uh, what else you guys got? Hit me with any questions. Sorry, I didn't see these. Let's see, for a color that is better to deal with, go silver or white? Yes, so the two, there's a few colors that I'm looking at. Um, in the Dodge Charger, 
uh, I'm going to go, I, I love how the granite looks. Uh, you know, who is Louis 13, his Dodge Charger. Also four guys talking cars. I don't know if you guys are on here. I love seeing you, your guys' content. Uh, they did granite. I think that granite on the Dodge Charger wide body scat packs looks so good. I think it looks awesome. Uh, you know, obviously I've had white knuckle. Uh, I also really like uh, uh, Tor Red. And then I also like, um, gosh, it's I'm drawing a blank. Hemi Muscle has... He has the Octane Red. I also like Octane Red. Um, in the Camaro, the colors I'm looking at um, would be Satin Metallic and then Shadow Gray. So I like both of those colors. I also like Riverside Blue. I'm a big blue fan. Um, and I wouldn't be opposed to white again just because white just hides so much. So I like those. So, yeah, I agree with you. IMO partnered uh, for, for color. Uh, go silver or white. And I think for my uh, perfectionist in me, I probably need to go that route. Octane Red, 909 Scat. Mm. Luke, how much is a BMW M2 these days? Uh, you know, I know they have their competition. I, I don't I don't know a lot about BMWs. I'll be honest, guys. Um, I like them. I had my boss from my previous job. I think he had, what do you have, an M2, an M3. Um, that car was fast, and it was fun. Um, I'm not a fan of the new grills on the BMWs. I don't like the vertical grills. Uh I've actually heard BMW is going to change and go back, uh, but I I don't I don't like them as much. Maybe they'll grow on me some more. But Luke, any information you have on the BMWs, let me know. I think you can get those in a manual. Um, so you know, for me guys, price range where I'm trying to stay at, just so you guys are aware. Um, if I do get a new car, which I probably am, um, even though right now is not a good time to buy. Uh, you know, I am I'm about 50k is what I'm looking at, 50k or less. So. Uh, you know, I'm looking to buy a car around 50 K put about seven grand down to be around the 43 mark kind of. So my, my loan payment really is no different than what it is now. Uh, I would splurge for the only reason I've thought about the Hellcat manual and the challenger is because I think the days are numbered of the Hellcat motor. I don't think they're going to keep making them. I don't think they are going to, uh, I, I just think, I just think their days are numbered. I don't think you need to go out and just like say you need to get one right now, but I think in the next three years, four years, max, if you're trying to get one, I would do that. M2s are sweet. Um, you know, the CS package. Yeah. So Luke, you said about 58 K, um, you know, and remind me how much horsepower those cars have. I want to say they have like what four. I'm just going to guess 420, 440, somewhere around there. Um, that could be cool. That could be interesting for sure. Um, you know, I, I, a car that I like, I really like the Audi RS3s. I don't know if you guys have ridden in one of those, those cars. And I have some buddies that have Teslas and the car that keeps up best from them from a stoplight is an Audi RS3. Uh, it's a five cylinder motor that Audi makes. Um, those are about the, around the 58, 60 K mark. That's just stretching it for me. Uh, if the channel was, if I was making more off of the channel, I would be willing to swing that and do that. Uh, but I don't know. Um, I am looking an automatic though, just because as much as I love manual transmissions, uh, is I do zero to 60 times. You guys have seen in my Mustang or my Challenger, uh, you know, it, you just can't shift them as fast. The automatics and the 10 speeds are just crazy fast. So Luke, your neighbor has an RS3. Uh, they are a nice car for sure. So I am mill partner. Let's see, 365 to 70 horse for the standard M2. 410 for competition trim, 444 and the M2 CS. Okay, so, you know, but the thing is, I bet those cars are lighter than our, our big V8s. Um, nimble, they're fun. I've heard, uh, I don't know if you guys watch, you guys watch Throttle House. They're one of my, probably my favorite car YouTube channels outside of, you know, the standards um, that I like. I love, you know, several of, of the channels that are on here. Uh, but those guys, uh, they... I think there was an M2 competition that they recently did. And uh, they, man, they raved about that car being like one of the best track cars. And it beat a lot of cars around their track that they did. So uh, Throttle House is awesome. Like their content, like I want to get to doing that someday, like to be as good as them. They, I think they put out some of the best videos, especially around the car industry. You know, obvi obviously all of us, you know, uh, we try and do, you know, reviews as YouTubers and that, but I think Throttle House does an awesome job. But if you haven't seen their, I think it's one of their, 
maybe a few videos back, but they did do the, the BMW. I think that would be cool. RS3, I think is awesome. However, I am not buying, like I feel more comfortable about American cars being out of warranty than I do a German car. A BMW or an Audi, ooh, yeah. Buying one of those without a warranty. I've owned several Volkswagens in the past. Uh, you know, my wife used to have a Volkswagen Jetta. It was turboed. I've, I've had a Jetta too. Um, I, I just, German, I think German does such a good job in engineering. I think when you sit in a car, it just feels luxurious, but man, without a warranty, whew, I don't, I don't know if I would do those. <laughs> I don't know if they do those. Let's see. Uh, IMO partner. That's my drag racing channel besides car. Wow. A British channel for racing. I haven't seen car. Wow. I'll have to check it out. Um, I'll have to check it out for sure. How about a new GTI? That could be interesting. Luke, um, remind me on the new GTIs. I think, did they, did they update the horsepower in those? Um, I know they're not over three, are they over 300 or they're like high twos? I can't remember. Um, I like the GTIs. I think GTIs are fun. Um, honestly, what I would love is to have a big V8 and to get like a GTI, get a Supra, get a 400Z, have like a, I, I really want a turbocharged car. I do like, I love big V8s, but I eventually want, you know, zero to 60 and five one. That's, that's pretty respectable. Um, that's, that's actually really fast. And I'm sure there's some bolt-ons and some different stuff that you can do. I really want a car. I can put a blow off valve on, on someday. I just, I think, you know, just that sound when you shift is awesome. So yeah, those could be cool. Um, the 400 Z, you know, I saw who is Louis 13. Uh, he's selling his wide body charger scat pack and he's going to get a 400 Z. Uh, the thing that I think is interesting is I think it's going to be some time. I mean, they haven't rolled out the 400 Z yet. And, uh, she RT Slayer. <laughs> well, Hey, you know, you never know, you know, <laughs> I'm a partner and might be able to beat it, uh, in a drag. It, you could, you'd have to see, but, uh, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's fun to talk about uh, these cars and what they can do. Uh, Luke, you know, I honestly think for the money, the Supra is tough to be. It is, especially their new ones that I think are packing like 370 horse, 390 horse. Um, you know, what's interesting is I think I'm kind of waiting to see what Toyota does because the new 400 Zs, uh, what I'm hearing is they're going to borrow the twin turbocharged engine from uh, the Q, is it the Q, it's the, it's, it's the Red Sport infinity i don't remember if it's a q60 i think it is but they're gonna have that twin turbo in the 400z and i think you know that car if they bump that car up above 400 horsepower uh which i think that the twin turbo setup in the in the red sport does uh i've heard that that car is going to be anywhere from like mid 30s up to like high 40s i think they're going to take a run at supras i think you're going to take a run at the big V8s. I think the 400Z could be really interesting. However, they just, you know, Nissan's been teasing it forever, but you can't, you know, they haven't, they haven't released it. They haven't released any of the specs yet. So it'll be interesting to see because Toyota's, I've tried building some of them and you're still about 60K. Um, and I think if Nissan comes out with a car that weighs about the same, but has more horsepower right around the same horsepower, I think there's going to be a fun war between um, I think there's gonna be a really fun war between Toyota and Nissan and what they do, because I think Nissan's going to make Toyota drive their price down a little bit. That's just, that's just what I thought. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, so let's see PBR, Doug, it's hard to hear what you're getting for 53 K when I got everything, but hood pins for 51 K for wide body scat with shaker hood back in April, 2020. I know, man, you know, guys, I, I paid 33 grand brand new for my Dodge challenger scat pack manual only had. It only had uh, the Alpine stereo group, but it was 33 grand. Uh, you can't build them that cheap. Uh, my bullet Mustang, I got nine to 10 grand off. Uh, so to pay sticker price for a car is tough. However, if it's not affecting my payments, um, yeah, it, it's just PBR Doug, there's not much out there, you know, like on, as I mentioned, kind of my build for, for, you know, if I've even looked up doing a, a, a challenger scat pack and uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Like just, the features and stuff that you add to it. It's just Dodge. They went from take retail delivery by June 1st to now, I think it's June 30th, but they've dropped all of their incentives down. Like the manual Hellcat, I was ready to roll with that one. Uh, they were given seven grand off and now I think they're given like three grand off. So it'll be interesting to see the incentives change every day, but uh, you know uh, yeah. Anyways, I, I did get a good deal on the bullet. Um, 
I'll be honest, guys, if you want good deals, you have to be willing to go drive somewhere and do it. You know, I went out to Lincoln, Nebraska to get my Challenger. I went out to uh, Iowa to get my Bullet Mustang. However, if you're doing it, learn from my mistakes, take some blue painters tape with you, and also take some track film. There's some track film that you can buy, put on the front of your car until you guys can get your car with paint protection film and ceramic coating. I've learned the hard way, but next time, I mean, two cars I'm looking at right now, uh, one of them is about a 600 mile drive home and the other one's about a 500 mile drive home. So you better believe I'm going to be, I don't care if my car looks like the Scooby-Doo wagon going down the road. I, I am going to make sure that my car is protected driving at home, but I did get a good deal on the bullet. Um, and that's what I'm a little bit scared about in selling it because whatever I'm buying, I need to put a lot of money down if I want to be in a good spot with the car because some point in time, this market has to shake out. But I used to say that about the housing market and it just continues to go up and up and up and up each year. So I don't know, guys. I, I think uh, our V8s are, you know, hang on to them. I, I do I do love a lot of things about the Bullet, but uh, I'm also just kind of curious just to try new stuff. So um, you guys might not like that. You might love it. Who knows? But I just, I want to go fast. I want to have fun and I want to be me. Um, I know what a lot of my fans out there want, uh, but uh, at the same time, I'm going to do what I want to do. And if you guys want to watch, great. Uh, let's see the Lexus IS 500. They're only making 500. I need to check that car out. I've heard that V8 is a monster in that thing. So I, I'm, a, I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a Mopar nerd. Uh, the IS 500 F sport. It looks, it looks really awesome. Um, and there's some fun cars coming out guys. Uh, you know, I think, uh, I think there could be some cool things in the works that they're all trying to do and trying to work on. I've heard Ford's trying to develop a really big high horsepower motor, um, that they're currently testing out. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, have you guys heard anything? And I, I don't know, I'm asking cause I don't know this. Um, Lexus is quality. Lexus, they, they are really nice. That's for sure. I, I do think a lot of the American brands have stepped up. Uh, when When is Ford releasing their new Mustangs? Has anybody out there heard? I feel like everybody right now is talking about what Dodge is doing and they're not making any changes till 2024. Has anybody out there heard of what Ford's doing? Because I, I haven't been in the loop on what Ford's doing. When is the new Mustang coming out? Um, I'm speculating in the next year, maybe two years. I don't know. It seems like everybody's on the same cycle, but if you guys have heard anything, let me know. Let's see if I missed anyone here. Yeah, same Luke. I haven't, I haven't heard. Um, the Mach 1, I might do a, I might do a video about the Mach 1 versus the Bullet. So, I have some people say, Austin, get a Mach 1. So here are my thoughts. Uh, I am not on the Mach 1 bandwagon, and here is why. Uh, I think the Mach 1 is very similar to the Bullet. Uh, it Even the seats are the same. They just changed a little orange color strip on the top of it. Uh, the only thing that's appealing to me about the, um, about the Mach 1 is the Tremec transmission. That transmission is great, and getting that car in a manual would be awesome. They also offer it in a ten-speed. However, they do offer uh, they do offer um, more intercoolers. Like I, I don't know all the different coolers that they add, but they do have more coolers than my car does. Uh, you know, different different kind of setup, but the car has the same horsepower, four hundred eighty to four hundred eighty, the same torque. It's the same tune. The exhaust is the same. Uh, so those cars right now are about 60 grand. Um, and Luke, honestly, I am down on, on Ford quality. Um, I am, I just, after owning my Dodge, you know, and I don't blame, I don't think all Fords are that way. Uh, I just, I've just struggled with mine. Like that MT82 transmission, I can fix it. Uh, you have to replace the whole shifting assembly. You need to replace the spring, but I really don't want to drop a grand or two on a car that I bought. Like it, the car grinds in second, third, creaks and cracks down the road. I have a piece of my dash that I have a piece of metal hanging out. All my door trims aren't fit really good. It might just be a product of my car was built during COVID and maybe they didn't, maybe they didn't check it, but I grew up having Fords all my life. My dad had trucks. We had cars. We were a Ford family. I love Ford. However, I just, I'm not, I've had a very similar experience over the years with Ford. Um, mechanically, I think the car is sound. It's fine. But you know, in the MT82 transmission, 
just go Google that on YouTube, uh, shift for its break. Um, if you have the 10 speed Luke, you're fine. Uh, my hate on Ford comes from the transmission I have in the car um, and some of the quality control stuff that they just missed. So I think Fords are still great, uh, but I am I do think the Mach 1 is headed in the right direction. I just don't think the price tag justifies a Mach 1 over a Bullet. That's my personal preference, although the transmission would be game changer for me. So anyways, those are my thoughts. Um, what else you guys have? If you guys are still here, leave a comment below. Don't want to drag this on if you guys are wrapping up. I'm sorry I missed all the comments at the start. It's good to know that you guys are actually watching this. <laughs> a few rattles, but it is a sports car. That's true, Luke. It is true, for sure. I'm picky. That's that's for certain, man. Um, let's see. Anybody else here? If you're here, drop a comment below, guys. Give this video a like. It helps tremendously. It's so funny. People like Racer X are trying to get 700 likes on a video. We're at three. 909 Scat, what's up, brother? Hey, I loved your email. Uh, the other day, hopefully you saw my response to that. Uh, it's great to meet you. Uh, guys, my, my, uh, Doug, what's up brother? It's good to see you. Um, guys, my, if you guys ever want to chat with me, you're welcome to, um, I don't scat sent me an email. Um, my, my emails, uh, in my videos, uh, if you guys ever want to hit me up on Instagram, um, you know, Swayze and I and others, uh, I talk to a lot. If you guys ever just want to message me directly on Instagram or over email, Guys, I'm available, and I try to be responsive as possible. I try to respond to any comment that you guys have. So uh, if you guys ever want to get a hold of me, man, I, I love chatting about cars. I love doing this. So uh, it'll be super fun. Um, really excited uh, for what where the channel's going. Um, let me ask you guys this. Do you guys watch, do you guys watch any of, uh, like, Stradman's videos or who's the other guy in his group? Obviously, there's Burlacker, and I think it's Stefan. I think his channel is Stefan, right? Let me look it up. If you guys watch any of their channels, let me know what you guys think. Stefan Lewis. Do you guys watch Stefan Lewis? He's part of kind of Stradman's group. If you guys watch any of their videos, let me know what you guys think. If not, no worries. <clears throat> So I did get a drive, uh, my dad's Hellcat. Uh, let's see, all right, 23 family lyrics. I'm 16 and planning on buying an RT Challenger soon. Uh, you know what's awesome, guys? Um, I should have done a video on this. Um, Luke, you're not a Strad fan. Um, tell me why, tell me Tell me your thoughts. Um, be curious to know. I, I, watch, I watch so many different channels on YouTube. It's like my new TV, I don't even watch TV anymore. I watch everybody's channel, but I'm always trying to learn, see what people do. I think it's really interesting. But 23 Family Lyrics, dude, you're going to love an RT Challenger. So, guys, I wasn't able to drive uh, a wide-body Charger uh, scat pack. I was able to drive a Daytona RT Charger. And that car was so much fun. Guys, I'm telling you, the RTs, they're still so much fun to have in those cars. You know, obviously, I came from a scat pack. Those RTs, like that car was lighting up the tires. It had so much torque. I've even seen some RTs out there, depending on where you're at, that, uh, you know, keep up with scat packs, you know, and I think that's so awesome. So, excuse me, 23 Family Lyrics, that's awesome, man. You're going to love it. Keep us posted. You have to let us know what your insurance costs are. Hopefully it's hopefully it's low. Uh, <laughs> uh, Luke, he's over the top for me, too hyper. I <laughs> he is very hyper. It's you know sometimes I worry I talk too slow that people are like, dude, who is this guy? Why does he talk so slow? Uh, he talks so fast. Uh, a channel that I I think they do a really good job with the videography um, with drones and stuff is Stefan Lewis. He's part of their crew, but um, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, what are good miles when buying a used Challenger RT? I don't know, fam. What do you guys think? Let's help out our buddy 23 Family Lyrics. Uh, what are good miles when buying a used Challenger RT? Uh, you know, 23 Family Lyrics, I, I would just say it depends on – it really depends on the budget that you have. Um, right now is tough to it, – it's tough to buy a car. Even used car prices, guys. I saw used car the other day. It was a used Camaro, cost more than what a new Camaro was. Like, blew my mind. Um, you know, I would say if you're getting a Challenger RT, um, man, it. there's so many different opinions here. Um, 
my opinion, uh, good miles. I would try and find something under 40 or 50,000 miles. Um, if you can find something lower, even better. Um, you know, I do think these cars are more robust. It all just depends on, it, it really just depends on you and your budget and what you have. I've been buying new. I used to not be a believer in buying new cars and buying used. Uh, one thing that I would check into is where you're 16, if you're getting on your own insurance or if you're on your parents, um, I, I would, you know, I would, I would check, just go find a random VIN of a challenger you want to buy or charge or send it to your insurance person, ask how much the, the quote would go up. Uh, that's what I would do. Um, you know, Luke makes a great point. I don't think it's the miles. It's how well it's taken care of maintenance records, et cetera. You know, these cars, these cars are built to be driven hard. They are. Uh, but if someone's taken care of all of the regular maintenance, the oil changes, you know, I'm a big believer in how people take care of the outside and the inside of the car also tells me a lot about how they drive it. So, um, you know, I'll be honest, I, I'm not, I've driven some cars from CarMax. I think CarMax is the place to go where people sell their cars when no one else wants to buy them. Uh, just make sure that you drive it. Uh, one thing I recommend doing, and this is something when I bought used cars, either for my wife's car or for mine. Uh, whoever you're buying it from a dealership or a private party, ask them if, you know, if they're willing to come with you, but go take it to a reputable mechanic and have them do it like a 21 inspection on it. Have them look over everything, look underneath the car, see what they've ran into, see if they've changed anything. The big thing that, you know, I've learned to look for, cause my father-in-law used to restore Porsches for a living is look at the paint. A lot of times people, if they don't report an accident, it doesn't show up on the Carfax. And a lot of times people will skate around that. Look to see if the car has been repainted in certain areas. If you see orange pill, rub your hands over it. When you're buying a used car, uh, just be super picky. Um, make sure you look over it. If they have the records, take it to a mechanic, have it look over it. But, you know, I, you know, I think you can get into a Challenger that has 60, 70,000 miles if it's been well taken care of and you can do it. Um, PBR Doug has an RT Challenger for his daily. I think that's an awesome daily driver. Um, those cars... You know, especially if it's an automatic, can have you know some of the de the the cylinder deactivation. You can get good gas mileage. So I think a Challenger RT is an awesome car. Um, they are a lot of fun, and honestly, those cars take power. You can build and, and do mods to those cars. Scat packs. It's just too expensive to do. There's so many things you have to update. Um, take it to Scotty Kilmer. <laughs> Luke, you're funny, man. I love that. Um, 23 family lyrics. I know that was a really long winded answer, but I care. Um, hopefully see that. Hopefully that helps you. If anybody else has any recommendations for 23 family lyrics, let them know. Um, yeah. What else you guys got guys? I think I'm all up to date on all the comments. Thank you guys. This has been a good group. Um, I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try to do lives more often. That's for sure. Um, I love doing this. I just need to make sure I see the comments first off. <laughs> Perfect guys. Um, well, I think I'm going to wrap that up, but, um, a quick, a quick update, guys. Um, for those of you, if you missed it um, when you're on earlier, um, I didn't have a problem until 125,000 miles. Doug, do you still have that car? How many miles do you have on it now? That's that's fantastic. And also, what year is it? I would love to know what year it is. That might help some people on here. Okay, guys. So upcoming videos. I'll just kind of recap on this. Three sync features you didn't know about. So obviously, you guys have a Mustang that appeals to you. Uh, we're gonna do Sync Three versus UConnect. We're gonna have a little comparison. Uh, I have been comparing uh, a lot of Dodge versus Mustang content. I obviously really like both. Uh, I obviously love both brands. Um, I'm going to do how a bullet Mustang is different than just your standard Mustang GT or performance pack. Uh, we're going to have some exhaust mode drive offs because I love the exhaust on the car. Uh, digital gauge, everything you need to know. I love the digital gauge on the Ford. That's actually one of the things I really like and I'll miss if I sell my car. So I'm going to talk everything you need to know about it. Uh, one video I'm excited for, he doesn't know he's, well, I've kind of like hinted that he's going to do this video or help me out, but we're going to do a Tesla owner drives a manual Mustang. I think that's going to be funny. And guys, I'm going to have a list of like Tesla jokes and I'm going to ask him how we drive. It's going to be fun. I used to work for this guy. Um, he hired me super cool guy. Um, so I'm excited to do that. Um, I'm going to talk about manual versus 10 speed. Um, and we're going to go over that. Uh, PBR Doug says, Wow, he has 140,000 miles on his 2012 Challenger, bought it new. That is fantastic. Um, guys, I just, the American, they used to just get such a bad rap, but man, they're just making these cars so fun, so powerful, and so robust. Dude, 140,000 miles, you didn't have any issues till 125. You know, my wife had an Acura MDX 
before we got the van. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that had that car had issues at 30, 40,000 miles, let alone not 125. So that's great. So uh, PBR Doug is, is someone who's very knowledgeable, maybe 23 family lyrics. You hit him up on Instagram or on here sometime. I'm sure he'd be happy to help. Nine on scat. Any advice we as fans can do to help get your channel more attention? Man, that is 909 Scat. You're a stud, man. Um, super grateful for you. Really appreciate you. Uh, you know, guys, what you can do, um, you know, make sure and make sure and like my videos. Uh, even if you guys don't like a video that I'm doing, I'm okay with it. It really doesn't hurt my feelings at all. YouTube's algorithm is crazy, and uh, you know, if you look at OC Motivator, if you look at a lot of channels, views aren't as good as they are. I think people are getting out in summertime. The best thing you guys can do is to like my videos, everyone that comes out, give it a dislike. I really don't care. Comment on it. Um, you know, those are the best things that you guys can do to kind of get a brand awareness out there. Um, you know, you can you know talk about the channel. You can recommend my channel. You can tag me on Instagram. Um, I'm happy happy to help if you guys are trying to build your channels if you're trying to build your Instagram profiles I'm more than happy to help you guys with that. I'm happy to tag you guys I'm happy to give you a shout out like guys I can't tell you how therapeutic this is for me and how much I enjoy just being able to do this So I, I, I'm, I'm happy to help you guys Luke you like all my videos. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it um, I am partner. No, thanks. I would get a scan tool um, let's see. No, thanks. I'd get a scan tool. I don't know what that's for. Is that for like checking a car on what you're buying? Um, <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Maybe, maybe give a, a comment there, but, uh, you know, guys, I still have on my back of my mind that I want to do how to, uh, get more followers on Instagram and YouTube. I don't know how many of you out there are building your channels. Um, I know there's some of you on here, uh, but, uh, it is something that I want to do at some point, but guys, my goal with the channel is to be honest, to be genuine. Um, I might buy cars that you guys might not like, you know, that's the truth. Like, uh, I know, you know, my channel is full of a lot of Mopar fans. I've gained a lot of Mustang fans. Um, you know, and I like Camaros, but I know Camaros really aren't that popular and people don't like them. But what I promise you guys that I'll do is that I'll be genuine, I'll be kind, I'll be nice, I'll be willing to help you guys out with whatever you like. Um, I'll be personable. If you guys take the time to write me, I'm going to write you back. Um, I want to have fun. I want to shoot. I want to shoot better quality videos. I want to have fun with the videos that we do. Um, I just want to keep growing this. Uh, you know, I kind of had a, a tough patch there over the past month. I posted a lot of videos in May, um, and I made a little bit less money in May, but. What I needed to remember of why I do this is I'm not currently in a marketing role today for my job. Uh, I used to have some pretty good marketing roles in my previous two companies and marketing is my passion. And this gives me an ability and an outlet to have marketing. And so guys, I'm gonna have fun with my videos. I'm gonna buy cars that you may or may not agree with, but I promise you I'll be genuine. I'll never be too big. We're gonna keep growing this. I'm committed to doing this. You guys, this is, this is my therapy. So you know, as much as you guys want to watch these videos and like them, it just allows me to do more. But guys, I really appreciate you guys um, more than you guys know. Uh, thank you guys for being part of this channel. Thank you guys for this live session. Uh, get that Taco Bell money. I'm still waiting on the sponsorships from Taco Bell, baby. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but anyways, guys, you have an awesome night. Thank you for all the support on the channel. Uh, I'm going to be filming some videos in the upcoming days, so I'll maybe try and get another video out this week. If not, it'll be dropping early next week, but I'm still focused on at least at a minimum getting one video out a week, um, sometimes two, sometimes three if I can. But guys, I'm motivated more than ever to keep this channel growing. We're going to get fast. We're going to get better. I love you guys. Uh, have a great night. We'll talk to you later. Bye.